Hello uh, and welcome to this virtual open day for the Department of Classics, Ancient History, Archaeology and Egyptology at the University of Manchester. My name is Dr Nick Overton, I'm one of the admissions tutors in the department uh, and it's my absolute pleasure to welcome you here to hear a little bit about what it's like to uh, study in the Department of Classics, Ancient History, Archaeology and Egyptology. Now you're thinking about coming to study in Manchester and that's a great idea because Manchester is a wonderful place to come and study both as a city and as a university and department. Um, the university as a whole is currently ranked 20th in the world, 9th in Europe and 6th in the UK which is excellent um, but it's also importantly for you we are currently the most targeted university in the UK for top graduate employers. That means that when you graduate with a degree from us, you also mark yourself out as a powerful and impressive individual for those employers to seek out and get. So you get to follow your passions, but you also get to set yourself up for your future interests and future careers. We also have a wonderful range of things to do in Manchester. Manchester is uh, voted as one of the best student cities in the UK. Currently, it's ranked as second behind London. Um, and 25% of our students uh, carry on living in Manchester after they graduate, which shows just what a wonderful place it is to come and stay and study. Now, you'll be here as well because you have some interest in the past. Manchester is a wonderful place to come and study the past. Manchester has its own Roman fort right in the heart of the city. So you can take a break from shopping or wandering around and go and take a few moments in our Roman fort. Uh, and also Manchester is the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution. So where better to learn about incredible seismic changes in the past of humanity than exactly where one of these such changes began. The Department of Classics, Ancient History, Archaeology and Egyptology covers a huge range of different topics. In fact, we're one of only a few departments in the country that covers all of these subjects. And we're also the largest in the country that covers all of these subjects, which is great for you if you have any interest in people in the past. So whether you're interested in the history of people, whether you're interested in the material artifacts and the monuments, that people use and make, the cultures that people live in, the literature that people produce, the civilizations that emerge from people living and working together for centuries or millennia, the languages they spoke, the landscapes that they inhabited and the life ways, the things that people did. What binds all of this together is an interest in people in the past. And this is what our department can give to you. No matter what it is you're interested in, we have the subjects and the modules for you to study in to follow your passions and interests. And because we have such a wide range of uh, subject expertise, we have an incredible chronological and geographical scope in our teaching. So chronologically, we range all the way back uh, to prehistory. So the modules uh, that I personally teach start um, with the story of Britain and we start one million years ago thinking about pre-homo sapien hominids moving through Europe and Britain and we move through prehistory through into the classical world in the classical Mediterranean and then we carry on all the way through into the medieval and all the way to the industrial revolution. Geographically we focus on Britain and Northwest Europe into the whole of Europe and down into the Mediterranean to Egypt and the Near East. So no matter what time period and what, what place you're interested in, the Department of Classics, Ancient History and Archaeology and Egyptology here at Manchester has you covered. Our expertise covers um, a range of different topics within this chronological uh, and geographical spread. So we have expertise in prehistory of Europe and Britain. So we think about the origins of humanity. Where did Homo sapiens come from? When did they first arrive into Europe? What was Europe like when it was inhabited by hunter-gatherers? When did people start farming and where did it come from? What kind of things did people make as societies got larger? So we see big monuments like Stonehenge, huge um, landscapes dedicated to monuments of death and burial, things like that. 
we run all the way from early uh, Paleolithic all the way through to the Iron Age, covering a range of these things. You can also come and think about what's happening in the Mediterranean and the Near East at this time as well. So before the classical world, what's happening in the Mediterranean and the Near East? So the prehistory of the Mediterranean, the origins of states, the birth of civilization and the birth of writing and complex crafts and the birth of city states. And then you can move into the classical period. You can think about ancient Greece and ancient Rome. Think about Greek and Latin language, poetry, the philosophy, the drama um, and the linguistics amongst many other things. And with our classical um, studies, you can also think about the ancient history side of things. So how were elements of the past uh, presented? So issues of warfare, of uh, politics, of natural history, of the role of women and the role of children in the classical world, social structure and medicine, all of these things are themes that we can think about when we're examining the past. And then finally, uh, we've been joined in the last few years by uh, some fantastic Egyptologists who will take you through ancient Egypt as well to get you thinking about ancient Egyptian monuments, um, civilization, uh, structures and memorials, uh, and mummification, of course, being ancient Egypt. So we have a huge range of expertise. Um, no matter what your interest in the past is, we have it covered here. And we have such a range of expertise because we have such a range of staff members. So we have research staff and teaching staff across classics, ancient history, archaeology and Egyptology. Plus, we have a wide variety of research fellows and emeritus staff, many of these who keep coming back and providing expertise teaching on different modules. As a diverse department, we have up to 300 undergraduates across our three years, but these are split over a number of different degrees. The joy of the department is that we are large enough to offer all of these different subjects and themes, but at the same time, you will be in relatively small classes, so you feel like you have excellent teaching experiences. And our expertise is not just limited to our department. We have people studying archaeology, Egyptology, uh, and classics and ancient history spread across the university. And we draw on these expertise within your uh, degrees in order to support and to enhance your learning process. So we have people who study what we describe as bioarchaeology. So that is the biological analysis of remains of the past. We even have people like Professor Mike Buckley, who is on the left hand side uh, in the middle just there, who invented a brand new method of identifying animal bones based entirely on sequencing the proteins from these animal bones to identify species. And this has led him to do amazing research, um, including finding um, a set of bones in the Arctic and identifying them to be an ancient extinct camel species. So we get Mike to come in and teach you about these methods and teach you about how they allow us to tell stories of the past. We also have amazing uh, members of staff from universities and uh, museums. So we have Campbell Price up in the top right there, our curator for ancient Egypt. And he will come in and he will teach you all about ancient Egypt, but he will also give you behind the scenes access to the uh, museum uh, in the University of Manchester, where you get to go and see the stores, see the mummies, see the artefacts. And then down on the right hand side in the middle, that is Brian Sitch, curator of archaeology at the Manchester Museum. He again will come in, he'll teach you, he'll also give you behind the scenes access to the materials that they store in the museum. So this gives you an amazing chance to get hands on with things from the past, things that interest you, things that allow you to think differently about people in the past. And we, all have, we also have members of staff across the university that study other subjects which are completely integrated and related to our own studies of the past. We have staff members in the departments of religion and theology, Middle Eastern studies, in history, in art history and philosophy amongst others, all of whom have similar themes of research and teaching. So we draw on this wide range of teaching experience in order to give you the widest 
um, and broadest learning experience that you can be. To support your learning experience at the University of Manchester, we have a fantastic range of teaching and learning resources. We have our central library right on campus where you can access all the books you're going to need for your studies. We have specialist archaeology and ancient history and classics libraries within the department to continue to help supporting your studies and finding those specialist texts that you need. We have an amazing special collections library in the centre of Manchester called the Deansgate Library, where you can go and have access to amazing rare and special books, including collections of ancient papyri. So if you're interested in classics and ancient history in particular, these are an amazing resource for you. We have wonderful uh, museums, as I've mentioned before, the Manchester Museum will take you behind the scenes, will be using their materials to teach you all about ancient people in the past. We have the Whitworth Art Gallery, which we can also get you in behind the scenes to see their archives and their materials. We also have dedicated common rooms for our undergraduate students, and we have dedicated archaeology labs where anybody within the Department of Classics, Ancient History, Archaeology and Egyptology can go into and do practical hands-on work, seminars, uh, practical sessions where we get you to look at materials, we get you to make things new and exciting ways to think about the past uh, in different ways. And we're interested in getting you to learn in new and exciting ways because we are dedicated to providing engaging and inspiring teaching and learning experiences here at the University of Manchester. The university has been awarded a silver award in the Teaching Excellence Framework recently, um, and the, the Department of Classics, Ancient History, Archaeology and Egyptology have had a number of lecturers receive awards in the last few years, including Most Inspirational Lecturer, Best Supervisor and uh, Best Communicator. And these awards are particularly meaningful to us in the department because these are awards that are voted for by students. So we know we're doing a good job because our students are telling us so with these awards. Um, we also make sure that our teaching is led by our research. You may go to other universities that tell you how important and exciting their research is, and no doubt that this is true. But it's important to think about how this research is bound into your experience and your degree. Here at the University of Manchester, we make sure that our cutting edge research makes it straight into your teaching. So I have colleagues, uh, Professor Julian Thomas, writing a book about the British Neolithic. You will hear all about that in his courses about the British Neolithic. And another one of my colleagues, uh, Dr Emma Griffiths, has recently written a book about childhood in the classical world. And you can come and learn about this in her module about childhood in the classical world. So it's really important that you can see that our research is being fed directly into your degree and into your learning. That's the best way that you're going to get an understanding of these subjects that you're so passionate and interested about. We also believe in having innovative and engaging assessments. Sometimes there will be exams, but we also want to make you do lots of other things. So we will have practical assessments. I get my students to make archaeological artefacts. We may do practical field work. We may get you to make radio programs or produce posters. The important thing is that we have a range of assessments that ensure that everybody's learning style is uh, catered for. It's not just exams for everyone. And we also believe that it's important that our studies have an impact on the wider educational community. So we have a range of outreach uh, activities which you as students can engage in and actually go and help other people learn about the past and you can help enrich their lives and enhance their understanding. And we also have fantastic fieldwork opportunities within the Department of Classics, Ancient History, Archaeology and Egyptology. These form part of your degree if you're doing any of the degrees with archaeology in them, but they are also there as an opportunity for anybody in doing any degree in the department. And these consist of two two week fieldwork placements, one after your first year in the summer and then a second in the summer after your second year. And we have a whole range of amazing places that you could be going to. You could be going to local sites in the Peak District. You could be going to museum placements if you 
think that working in museums is something you want to do after you graduate. We have amazing national sites. So Dorston Hill in Herefordshire, a fantastic Neolithic monumental complex, nearly 6,000 years old. No Name Hill in North Yorkshire, a site looking at Britain's last hunter-gatherers almost 11,000 years ago. Or Ardner Merkin in Scotland, an amazing project that looks at a single landscape and how people have used it for over 6,000 years. We also have a range of international um, opportunities. So previously students have been digging on uh, Paleolithic sites in Jersey. They've been digging on sites in Cyprus and we're hoping for a new fieldwork project in Greece coming uh, in the next summer, ready for when you come uh, and start studying with us. So the amazing thing about the Department of Classics, Ancient History, Archaeology and Egyptology is that we cover a wide range of time periods, we cover a wide range of places and we have an amazing uh, range of skilled people in the department that can help you follow your passions and your interests in the past in whichever way it may take you.